Hello, everyone, and welcome to Trust Me, Bro. My name is Ryan, with me is Yakuza, and this is the show that talks about the latest news, culture, and collects on the Lens Protocol. Yakuza, how are you doing today? Yeah, my everyone. I would say I would go with the classic, not too bad, like to say in the UK. You know why? I've been dealing with the cool twist yesterday. I had some fever last night. But you know what? I decided to tackle it with a couple of shots of rum, and today some pills, and uh, I feel better. I nice. think the issue may be that my voice will stay from time to time, or because I'm nursing a sore throat, but let's see. I hope it will be fine. What about you, Ryan? What are you doing? What are you drinking? Where are you at? No, 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 no. We're starting with what you're drinking. We're starting with what you're drinking, because I know, I already know mine is better than yours. So what do you got? I'm not too sure. I'm having a Pilsner Urkel, just one, because yeah, my sore throat is developing. Or simply Pilsen, how the locals say, is, is the most sold beer in Czech Republic and probably in Central Europe. The brand is established since 1842. And yeah, it's even one of the top beer brands in the world, and it's my favorite one. All right. What about you? What are you drinking? All right. Anyone who's followed me for a while knows, first of all, I've been posting pictures of my drinks, whether it's coffee or beer or cocktails or whatever. I've been doing that for like more than 10 years. Uh, I used to run like a beer account and stuff. But also, if you've been following me since like December, January, I went nuts with ChatGPT when that came out. And I just went on like a whole spree of asking ChatGPT to make me cocktails. And it was phenomenal. And so coming up with something for this week, I was like, you know what? I think we deserve a, a special cocktail here. So I asked ChatGPT and it came up with the Trust Me Brew, which is gin, fresh lemon juice, simple syrup, fresh mint leaves, which I put fresh sweet mint and strawberry mint. Put that in there, and then a uh, an other half IPA, and I made one one crucial mistake with this drink. This is such a rookie mistake. I made it, but I I upped the gin because I was thinking that the gin is the alcohol in here. Totally forgetting that you know beer has alcohol, so it's a little stronger than I was supposed to have. <laughs> so we'll see how this goes. This is going to be a good time. So made that you are in full power to go. Oh, I am full power today. Full power. Yeah, it looks really tasty. And I hope one day we can share one together. And about ChatGPT and the cocktail, I would love to have that ChatGPT when I was working back in the days in Lisbon as a barman. So it would be really helpful to develop some brand new cocktails. So it's yeah. stick with the classic ones. Yeah. So what do we have today in the show? Today we're going to talk about first new updates, funding social applications or platforms, Gitcoin grants, Tea Party, MedFi, and many more. And of course, we're going to announce the Trusted Talent winner. And last but not least, we'll have a chat with our special guests, James and Amber. Yeah, can't wait Hi, for that. James. Hi, Amber. Yeah, so happy to have, uh, have both of them with us. The news here is pretty focused on um, financial stuff, which is not that exciting, but it kind of is if you're a creator here. And then, yeah, we'll definitely spend some time with actual creative people doing actually creative things like James and Amber. So super excited about that. So we decided that we will, when will make sense, we'll come up with some Trust Me Bro updates. And as this was our first week after going live, firstly, we'd like to say a huge thanks to everyone for all the support, reviews, engagement, shares, mirrors, whatever, comments with this English about the show about the audio has been amazing. The sound feedback has been great, which is quite important for us as we record the show. So huge shout out to Butterfly and to Mo. In the meantime, yeah, as we launched the Trusted Talent thing, I think it's another level comparing to polls. Polls, it's just about who has the most followers will win, most likely who has the most engagement profile, most likely win. And here we came up with that idea, like let's open up to everyone. So we'll come back to that later and we'll announce the winner and probably we'll need to have a bit more details in explaining how it works because more, probably some people didn't understand or maybe we didn't explain it quite well. So what we also have done over the last days, we uploaded all the recordings from the spaces. So basically Ryan is wrapping up the audio recordings and 
then we post it on Spaces, and we are also on Spotify. So feel free to take a look at us on Spotify and give us a rate. We also uploaded a podcast video, after also Ryan prepared it. First on LensTube, our content will always go first to LensTube, and then we also upload it to YouTube. And Ryan, the first time we uploaded some stuff for YouTube, there was some, oh my God. some uh, interesting story to talk about. Our account got suspended on the first day. Can you tell us a little bit about that, please? <laughs> yeah, I thought you had signed in. I thought it was a classic no, case of, yeah, no, I, I, I thought it saw two people from different countries signing into the same account. That didn't even happen. It was even lamer than that. For some reason, I, and I still don't know why, but we got flagged on the very first day. And I got two different answers. YouTube said that we violated uh, community guidelines and that it was also deleted because the main account, the Gmail account was deleted. And that didn't make sense. And then I went over to Gmail and they said like it was deactivated. And so once I got that back, it all came back. But it was just so infuriating and very jarring because I'm coming from a world like I've been on Lens for the past almost like almost a year where I never, ever have to question, does my content violate anything? Is it ever coming down? Do I have to worry about rules? And but like, I never have to think about that stuff. And so to post something that I worked so hard on, and then hours later, they're just like, yeah, no, we don't believe you. It was just so jarring, just really like, I know we all say we want to own our content and you never know if it can happen to you. And most that's of us are true. probably, yeah, most of us are probably saying, yeah, but it'll never happen to me. Like that's good. For, I'm, you know, I'm glad that people can own their stuff, but that would never happen to me. And it happened to us on the first day, man. Like that was ridiculous. Glad we got it back. But yeah, it just, yeah. it really proved the point that we are lens first. And then wherever else makes sense, we'll, we'll do that. But yeah, it, it was just a nightmare. Yeah. If I'm stunning, so you, Ryan, you posted it on <laughs> yeah. Twitter, right? You know, Stanley went straight away to repost it. And like, what the fuck? Anyway, speaking on Twitter, yeah, we also created a Twitter account just like to be in web two platforms still. We are just planning to copy our content that it's first lived on lands and just drop it there. Our main focus is to build on lands. And yeah, we also uploaded the postcard video to Twitter and that one is still there. So we didn't got rugged <laughs> by Ellen. So this is and what we have done over the week. We know it's called X. We're still calling it Twitter. I think everybody's still calling it Twitter yeah, for a while. Yeah. So. X, yeah. Let's try to <laughs> change the mindset. So yeah, what's next? We don't know exactly what's next. We are just keep building, preparing the next podcast. We are trying to build our community. I would say that we call it community because it's not about being an audience. And uh, we really don't know exactly what's next. That's a good question. We are just going to try to stick, be consistent with the podcast, with our content, try to be in as much platforms as possible. And then we'll see, and I hope our development guides will come up from the community. So I'm yeah. glad you are all here and lately we'll get you we'll have enough to party so everyone can share the thoughts about what we are trying to build. But yeah, I'm looking forward to hear from you guys. Yeah. And again, like the whole driver here is we just want to highlight content on lens and we want to incentivize people to create more content on lens. So that is always the driving factor here. So it's lens first, it's community first. We're not worried about the views, not worried about ads or anything like that. That's not even anywhere on the roadmap or anything. So yeah, I think, uh, I think we're good. I think we can move on. And I guess we should get into the first story here, which is not too much of a crazy story, but basically I was tagged in something by Tea Party. And Tea Party is this platform that lets you see all kinds of analytics and you can promote your posts. You can do all kinds of things with it. The reason I wanted to talk about this was because Tea Party shows a metric which is specific to my interest, which is it shows this engagement metric. So if you look at someone's profile through Tea Party, it will show you basically what the engagement rate is for any person. So like for a little bit, I was at like 10%. Now I'm at, I don't know, 7% or something lower, maybe whatever. But basically... 
this goes into my whole thing. I keep, I know it's like a, a drum beat that I'm just constantly pounding on here, but I just, I, I want people to understand that this is such a great open database that we have. And when you can look at more than just followers, but you can look at who is creating actually engaging content and you can put all kinds of metrics. And this is a perfect one. I would love to see this in Orb or Butterfly or whatever, just to see how engaging the content people create is because it's really helping us. Like I can go through, um, you know, what has been posted on Lens through the week and I can figure out, oh, wow, this person, even though they only have 50 followers, they've posted six posts that have gotten crazy engagement. Yeah, it checked it out. It's not about Lens for answers. It's not to about who has the most followers, it's about the engagement rate. That is, I think this is the right metrics to measure how someone profile is on Web3 because it's not about having a lot of followers. It's about how people react to yourself, like the engagement rate. So I really like that. And this is the tool that we are also using so that everyone will know. And yeah, feel free to check it out. And yeah, it's really cool. And you'll see, of course, most of the so-called brand influencers on the top, but you're going to be surprised because some people, they don't post that much and their engagement rate is like piling up. So I think it's a fair way to show some proper content and to highlight who is dealing and doing good stuff on Lens Protocol. Yes. If this interests you, demand it from your app developers. Beg Orb or beg Butterfly. Beg these guys to put that kind of metric in there because it really is helpful. And, you know, the more data we have, the, the better the whole system is. So definitely check that out. All right. Next up, another ad, Funding Social. I also had a quick look, but you were the man who went down the rabbit hole. So can you give us some hints of what is the Funding Social app? Sure. I'm going to complain a little bit about Gitcoin in a minute. And I really don't. So I'll write in my next article. <laughs> yeah. So like it, it's going to come from a place of love, but I have complaints about Gitcoin, but there's an app called funding.social and that's the URL, www.funding.social. And all it does, you connect your wallet, you sign in with Lens and it shows you all of the Gitcoin projects, all the Gitcoin funding that your friends or your followers have funded. That is the whole app. Every, that there's nothing else. And so I wanted to point this out because this is a feature that is sorely needed with Gitcoin, but also I hope people can, I, I run into a lot of like developers and, and people who want to build in web three and they get overwhelmed with the idea of building a giant app, like trying to build the next Facebook or trying to build some giant game or some whatever. And it's like, you don't have to build the whole thing right away. You can build one very specific feature like funding.social did, where it's literally just one feed of who your graph is funding. And that is it. And that is one feature that another app needs. And now everybody in the system, in the whole Web3 system can build off of this and use this. And so I hope developers and people trying to build anything, even if it's art or, you know, it just, it doesn't have to be app specific, but whatever you build and publish on a blockchain, you can think of that as just a component that other people can then integrate in their thing. And I thought this was just a great example of that. Like it does one thing, does it very well, and there's nothing else to it. And I hope everybody can um, look at that and try and figure out maybe how can they build in those terms as well. So maybe you should take a deep dive or not so deep, but just some highlights what Bitcoin grants are because today is the last day to donate. We'll share the li all the links of what you're talking about in the, in the show notes. So Gitcoin grants 18, last day to donate is here, offering a chance to fund projects you believe in, Web3, and have your donations match for a bigger impact for the next internet that it's called, the so-called Web3 based on blockchain. So what are these Gitcoin grants program? So basically, the aim is to support what matters in the web world with amplifying donations through quadratic funding. Quadratic funding is just like a democratic crowdfunding, but on chain, comparing to Normie's language, let's say. And how it works, basically, we can break it up and break it down in four steps. So there's a matching pool creation. So Gitcoin collaborates with partners to generate a matching pool of funds. 
Then the second step, project participation. So the grantees submit applications to take part in these Gitcoin grants and the Gitcoin team assesses these applications. So they all decide, okay, this project makes sense to go ahead. This project does not make sense to go ahead. We need some more insights about this project. Then the next step, the third step is the community round engagement. So the grantees that were approved by Gitcoin grants will have the project entered into a round and then they will be able or enable the community to contribute donations and cast their votes. The last step, the post round allocation is after the round concludes, the collected funds are distributed accordingly to the grantees that applied for the grants. You can choose in this, at least in this one, the, the grants 18, you can apply and decide to support three or four donation types. So web key open source software. So you may be able to support projects developing on Ethereum and Red Tree, for instance, Lens, uh, Lens Tube, they are there and they are very well supported in receiving grants. Then you've got Web2 Communication Education. So non-software initiatives driving Web2 progresses. You can also support climate solutions. So co contribute to Web3 climate solutions and to simply have a better environment. So basically support apps on Web3 or projects that will help the health of the planet. And then last but not least, the Ethereum infrastructure, which is the base of all of these. So you can also help to support the Ethereum metric system and the co-development of the Ethereum of all the Ethereum infrastructure. And why do you think this is important? So this most likely is empowering the web growth, is multiplying your impact because if you're matching funds, you open fair donations. So it means that every contribution counts. By donating, you become a collaborative effort and support to the community of the project and you can then participate in this project. Talking about the climate solutions again, you can address climate solutions. If you want to support a climate solution project, you can play a crucial role in just supporting these projects in reducing uh, greenhouse gases. And then of course, if you want to support the advanced Ethereum ecosystem, you can boost the Ethereum development by contributing to the core infrastructure. The main thing of this, it's, it's very easy to participate. You just need to log in. If you don't have a password, you need to renew, you need to get one. Password is like the way how to log in. If you have one, you need to renew to make sure that you are updated. And then you need to do some bridging steps to make sure that you can access and fund the project that you are willing to fund. And if you want to look into more ways how to donate, we also share the links how you can do it. What do you think about this, Ryan? All right. I mean this in the nicest way possible. I want to strangle you for saying it's so easy. <laughs> I, oh my Thank God. Thank you. Yeah, I have some thoughts about this. I've been in crypto since 2011. I've been very technical. I know I can figure out how the EVM works and all kinds of stuff. Like, I'm not stupid when it comes to this stuff. I almost threw my laptop out the window today because Gitcoin is so, they make it so hard, I think. The instructions don't match what I had to do. And I just, I, again, like this comes from a place of love because if I didn't think they mattered, I just would not talk about them. But they do such incredibly great work. And I think it's really telling that back in July, someone made a copy of Leinster and they called it Quadratic Leinster. And it was very easy to just look at my feed and someone's like, oh, I'm raising money for this. And all I had to do was two clicks. And I funded, like I was donating left and right. Like every time it came in my feed, I was like, yeah, absolutely. Here's another five bucks. Here's 10 bucks, whatever. And that was like very easy to do. And I even made a point back then. I was like, I've never ever donated through Gitcoin, but here was a super easy way to do it with Quadratic Leinster. So today I woke up, I saw, you know, oh, there's only an hour left and we're approaching the deadline. I'm like, okay, I know I should donate some of the projects. I really want to. And it took me a half hour to get through the walls of text and again, the mismatched directions. And 
the reason I want to talk about this is I hope other developers, I hope other people can look at this and understand you're not asking for much money, but you're asking for a lot of my time because every page that I go to on Gitcoin, it is a wall of text and I don't want to read a wall of text. I know the project I want to fund. I just want to fund it and nothing is matching up and they're yelling at me and they're saying big red letters like your donation is not going to be eligible for this. And instead of framing that as a negative that I then spend 20 minutes trying to figure out how to resolve, they should really just frame it as a positive with very clear instructions. Hey, if you want to donate $10, that's fine, but we will match it and that will become, you know, $200 or whatever it becomes. It will become this if you do these extra steps and just lay out what those steps are. And so I feel like they need a look with the UI and the UX because they're clearly passing up a lot of money. And I think we should all be just a little angry about that because that money that they're passing up directly affects us. It directly affects the developers. It directly affects everybody. And again, like when we saw it on Lens with Quadratic Lenster, it was like, it took two seconds. It was so easy. It just came in my feed. Oh, so-and-so is building a, this kind of app. Great. Uh, yeah, I'll give them five bucks. I click and it yeah. takes me through another thing and I approve it and done. That's yeah. how it should be. So, you know, I real I love Gitcoin. I love what they're doing. I get the whole, like connecting all these services to prove that you're an actual human, all that. I get it. I get it. I just want them to make a very clean, simple interface for people like me who don't want to spend a lot of time. That's all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, when I was going down the rabbit hole to try to explain this in like the easiest way possible, because I was not also too much involved in Gitcoin, I found out a website, not Gitcoin, that explained the process much simpler. So I took it from that, all the information. Ah. And once again, we're going to share all the links in the show notes. So I think we can move on to the next topic. Ryan, collect another tool that we are using recently. And now they are supporting the Ethereum NFTs. Let's dive in. Yeah. Yeah, this is cool. This is very cool. I love collects with the Z. They do a very nice job of, um, they just support a lot of things. They keep building really quickly. They're listening to the user feedback and iterating, like I said, like very quickly. It's a very impressive team. What they have enabled now is, so you can create a gallery of your lens NFTs and everything, but now they've enabled Ethereum NFTs, like everything that you've collected outside of lens. And this is really cool because they've also enabled community pages and project pages from these NFTs. So if you have a Galverse NFT, you can click on that, or you can look at it, you can trade and do all that kind of stuff. But then you can go to the project page and it will show you all of the NFTs in that project. And then it will also show you like their official links and all that kind of stuff. But then it has all of the Lens users in that community. So you can see all the other Galverse holders and you can see feeds of that. You can see collects and posts and all that kind of stuff. And an even better example I have pulled up on my laptop is if anyone knows Grams, Grams is a great photographer on Lens and he has this, I don't know when he, it, he started it before Lens, but it's this project called It's Good, I-T-H-G-U-D. And it's like a food project. He's got lots of pictures of food. And then if you own one of these, he's got, he's traveled the world. And so he's built like Google Maps that he will share with the holders for all his favorite restaurants and that kind of stuff. So I'm looking at that through Collects and I can see the whole community and I can see that there's 13 of us on Lens that are in his project here. And again, like I can see the feed, I can see what people are collecting, you can see what people are posting, all that kind of stuff. They've just done such a great job constantly adding new features. And they were doing progressive web apps before that other popular app was. These guys are really pushing things forward and I just love to see it. Awesome. So I would like to have a quick one about MedFi. So Met Finance crypto subscriptions are now on land. So they just came in one week ago. Of course, so all, we are also showing them all the links to get this done, to tear it out, and also to their um, first post. So what are they clicking? So Met Finance, or let's call it MedFi, which is easier and short, 
It's a protocol built on base that enables creators to manage and monetize content. We started with Twitter and now they are also on Lens. So some features are not yet available on Lens, but they are quite uh, consistent already on Twitter with more options on Twitter, but they are planning to do everything what they're doing on Twitter also on Lens. So basically you will have the option to create subscriptions as a creator, or you've got a Lens profile, you can now set up a crypto subscription and offer exclusive content to your top fans. And this is very easy to set up. You just set up a fee and this fee is going to be uh, highlighted or connected to a badge NFT on MedFi with real-time subscriptions by Superfluent Protocol. Superfluent Protocol is a protocol for Web3 business that offers options for subscriptions, sellers, and rewards. So basically, they are working a partnership with Superfluent. The badge NFT access offers the subscribers to get an NFT via some external application that will make the bridge between the base and the Polygon. So actually your NFT will sit on Polygon network and then you will grant access to the gated lens post. These budget NFTs are going to be dynamic. So they will evolve. So most likely what they're planning to do here is if you're going to be a massive supporter, you're going to get more features added to this NFT. This looks quite interesting. So this also becomes with a transparent connection. So the badge and NFT on a ship decrypts all the exclusive content. So you're going to be able to see everything on chain. So your profile on chain will be reflected what you, but by what you are doing also with Medfly. And then of course, this is also a way of support the community. This part of the build on base proposal, and they were seeking votes for the community, for the community, but this is already live. And last but not least, you can go there and just subscribe to use the protocol. This comes up at the cost of a monthly fee. If you subscribe to MedFi, you pay less than one USDC per month. If you subscribe, you can use all the features. You can ask for token gates, stuff, to have private stuff for your profile. But if you just to like, how we say, stick around, you'll get the badge NFT that boosts your profile on Lens. You will earn XP points for engaging with the other profiles and the other posts, and you'll act, you will have immediately access to the gated points. So I think this is important why I wanted to highlight. This is empowering all the creators. So subscriptions paid by crypto or being able to set up by crypto, it enables the monetization and community engagement quite straightforward and you will be quite transparent. You can see everything online. The utilities for now are just some, for some examples. You are going to be able to have the subscriptions. You will be able to set up bounties so you can ask, okay, who wants to post this post to my account and the best post or the best uh, proposal post will get paid in crypto for making a sponsored post on lands. You can also have, of course, like I mentioned before, the token posts. And on Twitter or X, they have already token gated space. Of course, this is not yet possible on Butterfly, but maybe some feature that will come up in the future. The other good thing is this works both ways. So the, the subscribers are XP points for interacting with creators, land posts, and yeah, you're going to have direct earnings. There's no middleman, even though that we've got a subscript super fluid protocol involved in the transactions, they are not going to take any fees. The only fees that you're going to pay here are the fees that you're going to pay to subscribe to MedFi themselves. So I think it's quite good new tool that all the creators on Lens can have a go. And yeah, of course, if you haven't checked it out yet, you can then take a look at MedFi profile on Lens. And of course, we're going to also share the links in our show notes. And yeah, I think it's quite a good new tool for all the creators out there. Yeah, I think it's very important because I, you know, it's very like, it seems nerdy, it seems very technical, but basically we're all on Polygon or on Lens. And I, I think BASE is going to be an incredibly important, if not one of the most dominant chains out there. 
And I think it's going to be important really because Coinbase can really smooth out the onboarding. You know, I don't know about the rest of the world, but the, at least for the American population, I think Coinbase is really going to bring a lot of American users to crypto and they're going to be living on base. And then it will take them a little bit longer maybe to move elsewhere or for just more cross-chain stuff and it won't even matter. But I think really like new users are, for the most part, it's going to be like the America online of crypto. It's going to be where most American users are. And so if you have something like Mad Finance, where you can be a Lens user on a completely different chain, but you can still apply the subscription and the token gating to apps that are on base. And I think that's going to be huge because base does not look like it's slowing down at all. There's just going to be more and more apps there and they're not in Lens. So I think this is going to be a very nice bridge between all of that. And what made me think, wow, is that even though they are on base, the man is that our NFTs or the NFTs on MedFi are going to be hosted or they're going to be, they are going to live on Polygon. And just, I want to make a comment playing a little bit of the devil and speaking from someone living in Europe. I hope you guys in the USA treat well Coinbase, otherwise they'll just get the fuck out of there and they'll come to Europe and, and or Dubai. And so I hope Coinbase will be successful, not only in the USA, but across all the world. Yeah. 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 Their, their success really can Matters. hinder. Yeah. It, it, it can, if they fail, it's going to set crypto back quite a bit. Crypto will succeed no, no matter what, but I think if Coinbase has setbacks, the whole space will have setbacks. And if Coinbase succeeds wildly, it's going to happen worldwide regardless. But I think once we get more American companies on board, if Coinbase succeeds here, like it's just going to accelerate things like crazy. So any kind of bridging between base and uh, Polygon or base and anything else, I think it's a huge win. Yeah, I hope so. So we were inspired by James and we're going to talk about spin and Hi, James. Good to have you here in our second space. How are you? Yeah, welcome, Tim. TM, my bros. Thank welcome. you for thank you for being I hope here. You're having, I hope you're having a beer, at least some drink. It doesn't need to be alcohol. Yeah. I, I've got one on deck, but not quite yet, but it's gonna happen later for sure. You oh, you've inspired me both both with the drinks that I'm seeing posted here. I'm gonna have one to celebrate. Yeah, it's been good to see you roll out this project. Congrats. Loving what Trust Me Bro is doing. I'm nice. happy to, nice. to be here and chat about spin -out. Before we maybe dive into that, can you tell us like in a short way, how did you get on board in WebG and mainly then on posting on lands and how do you rate it? And how, how do you feel about that? Mostly lands. Okay, so real quick, I got involved in NFTs, music NFTs in 2021, early 2021, posted up some stuff on the Ethereum chain. And then I just had a similar experience to many people on Twitter where engagement dropped because I wasn't subscribing. And around the same time, I was able to get a lens handle and jumped on just mainly because I've been waiting for decentralized social to start to bloom. And I saw that there was a really strong community around lens. And so I thought I'd invest my time and energy into that. And it was a bit of an afterthought, to be honest, to post music. So I did, I post some, posted something up. I'm like, yeah, okay, let's do it. Let's see how it works. And I had a good experience. Like there was instant feedback from listeners. The first track that I posted up there is still getting collects. So, I mean, I give it a high rating. Posting music on Lens has been a really good experience from my perspective. And I also love that there's a lot of different platforms you can use to upload. So I started using Lenster to upload my tracks and I've used beats or uh, otherwise known as riff i posted via butterfly and through orb so i just i love the idea that you're not limited to one particular platform so that's yeah overall i'm, I'm loving the experience posting music on lens what is your favorite platform oh come on now uh <laughs> no, I, look, 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 look i mean look we all have favorites and we all like everything like i'm very i am very vocal about i love sound xyz and they're not even integrated with Lens yet, but I just, to me, I think Sound XYZ is doing it the best, and I hope everyone else catches up to that. So, like, for you, who, like, who do you think is doing it the best? What's your favorite, you know, <laughs> who do you want others to emulate? Well, I'm, I'm a big Butterfly Maxi. I, I love what Mo's doing here. 
I jumped into Ooh La La pretty earlier. So like before I even had stuff up on Spinamp, the guys from Ooh La La reached out and I really love that platform. But I mean, you know, there's so much out there, but I think, yeah, if I had, if I was forced to make a... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, no, I do. I love what Butterfly's doing. I love what Lola is doing. But yeah, I had Spinamp on my device and I was using it. But at first, I wasn't able to actually get my music on Spinamp. So it was right. actually with thanks from the guys at Riff. I had a really long chat with Watcher about what they wanted to do. And he was telling me about like the way that the that Spinamp indexes their their files and was just a little bit more music focused. And we were talking about uploading and, and posting to Riff and I was definitely down. And so he offered to get in touch with the uh, Spinamp crew and have them index my tracks and create an artist page. So that was the start of that. Uh, but the issue is that like they're still manually indexing their music. So it's not, um, you know, auto automated in any way. Uh, this I is what I wanted to ask you. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Cause I wanted to ask it. So you had posted that they helped you create a profile. And I was wondering, like, is that a new feature or is that an old feature? And because you had posted that, I went back to Spinamp and I saw that they had new releases for you feed where they show you new releases from the people that you're following in Lens. And I thought that was awesome. It's definitely needed. And yet it was still missing a couple things. I, I think the profile thing has been around just because there are artist pages uh, and there were when I discovered that suddenly I had one as well. But I think they're curating who they bring into the platform, similar to the way I believe Ooh La La does as well. It's not like, I don't think it's too difficult. If you're making a lot of music and you're posting and you get in touch with these guys, like they're super cool. Like they'll most like, oh, I, like, I don't uh, think, I don't think that's a bad thing at all. I think it's just something that we should know. That's all. Yeah, and I think it's good because they also, they limit just like a lot of spam and one-offs and stuff that like, you know, you're going to end up spamming the feed. Whereas I find that Ooh La La and Spinamp are very like clean and it's really easy to find good new music that's being made in, in Web3. So I, I actually uh, met a, a new friend at the Blockchain Futurist Conference here in Toronto and it happened to be that he was close friends with the, the main dev, Aiden. So I actually got back in touch because I had a, I noticed that some of my tracks weren't indexed and just dropped him a quick message on Telegram and he helped me through it and sent me like a form to submit my most recent tracks. And so that was sort of when I posted that up on Lens just because it was nice to see that they were willing to help continue build it up. It wasn't just like this thing that just pops up and then like you don't have control over it and they're not able to help you build it out. And Aiden was totally willing and happy to do that. So props to Spinamp. Spinamp, do you think you're going to stick with them? I looked into it and they look quite clean layout, how you have to do things, how to have access to the tracks, to the playlists, who to follow, how to share everything. Uh, I think it's quite easy, even for a person that is not so Web3 technical. Would you stick with them or is this your plan to stick with them? Yeah, I, I, I'd love to keep seeing my music ag aggregate on Spinamp. Uh, so I'll definitely keep them in the loop. The next time I drop, I'll send them a quick note. But just is, to... it, is it still better face or? I'm not sure. That's a good question. I mean, it seems like it's definitely still very new. Maybe they have plans to roll it out a little bit more publicly. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, it is a little underground, which is also kind of what I like about it. It's like a little obscure. The user interface looks like an old, like, Windows machine. <laughs> no. Uh, Tell me what it know, is. Ryan, Ryan, no, no, no. What I'm, thinking, what I'm thinking already is that they, they will have the, like, the category for podcasts, so we can also upload our podcasts yeah. with them. Okay, <laughs> okay but, but more more pressing. James, James, I need you to tell me what Spinamp is a play on. It was a Winamp, right? Yes, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I know so I'm old, but that would kill me. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so uh, in, in a short one, tell us why we should go ahead with Spinner. Like, so I, I would say like any other Web3 music aggregator, I love discovering music that I would not find anywhere else. And you can do that on Spinamp. You can do that on Ulala. So, I mean, um, yeah, just go and discover new stuff. Don't default to Apple Music or Spotify. Open up Spinamp make some playlists and listen to some new Web3 music. Yeah, I, I fully agree. I, I love Spinamp. I love I, I love the throwback 
design style. I like everything that they're doing. It's very clean. My experience is usually just either I listen to my own collection or I go into the Explore feed and I just let it play in the background or whatever. But yeah, I, I definitely, I love that. That app is great. Um, I want to ask everybody who's on here, who is a creator at least, do you remember the first dollar you made online? Do you remember the first time you sold, I don't know if it's music or anything? Yeah, I mean, in Web3, for sure. So shortly after I onboarded myself because I noticed that music was being released as NFTs. And shortly after collecting, I decided to try posting some of my own stuff. And so I did like an audio visual piece and added it to OpenSea, just minted it on OpenSea or lazy minted it. And to my surprise, I got some collectors and just, it was still early enough. I think that like, you know, music NFTs were a little more rare. There were visuals, but it was mainly a music piece. So that's the first thing for me. Last question. Does anyone in your professional production career ever ask you about what the fuck are you doing in Web3? Are they curious about that? Do you mention with them? Because every time I try to talk to my friends or family about Web3, it's like, are we in some kind of, involved in some kind of call? Does it involve drugs <laughs> and stuff like that? And I, and I should I, note I, for... I just, no, for now it's only alcohol. <laughs> I should note for any listener out there who doesn't know James, James is very accomplished, uh, very, I mean just tons of production credits and, you know, professional audio engineer. So yeah, we're, we were just curious, like, ha does anyone in that world ever talk about Web3 to you or do they ask about it or do they think you're just crazy? Yeah. I mean, you know, I think right now the music industry is starting to take note, like here, even in Toronto during their Block Film Futures conference, they had a music NFT panel. And they brought in some people from the like provincial funding organizations. So Factor and Music Ontario, which, you know, are traditionally the organizations that you find working in the music industry. And then I had some conversations with some individuals afterwards and they're definitely curious, but I think it's still a little early. So they're trying to figure out what to do with the technology. Aside from that, I don't have anyone running up to me from like the music industry asking how to get involved. I do find there are some times when I'm speaking to some colleagues from the music industry who I used to work with. And they're, it's hard. They're still not like, you know, the minute <laughs> I mentioned blockchain or crypto, you got kind of lose them. So yeah, yeah. we're working on it. Yeah. 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 It's it's just going to take time, I guess. That's all. <laughs> Agreed. Thank you so Thank much you for James. coming up. Thank you for being here so early on and with such late notice too. We did not give you a lot of time to prep for this. We really do appreciate it. <laughs> and yeah, so thank you very much for sharing your thoughts on SpinAmp and music and Lens, and uh, we hope to have you back sometime. Appreciate you, you guys. Once again. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, you're more than welcome. And we appreciate that you accepted it. So next yes. up is Peace. Amber. What's up, yes. Amber? Hello. Hey, Ryan. How are you How doing? Nice. Pretty good. Just chilling. Thanks for having me. Please. Thank yeah. you for coming up. Yeah, um, yeah, great for having you. We saw this great piece of art that you posted that is through an app called Chromadin. And Chromadin is not lens specific, but I've seen quite a few lens artists that are over there. And so I was just wondering, like, how did you come to Chromadin? What convinced you to post there? How is it going? Do you know anybody there? Yeah. So um, I think at first I saw it on lens, actually. I saw someone like posting about their post that I made on Chromadin and I went on the website and I explore a little bit and it was really interesting because I think the way their website structure is like really unique. It doesn't really look like a standardized marketplace or any lens app like where you go on it's a little bit overwhelming at first. I think my first thought was like it feels like I'm like at an arcade and there's so much like, visual stuff going on. But I think that's what's fun about it. And that kind of makes me want to explore. And then I got connected with the funder. I think it's Emma Jane. And yeah, and I thought I really wanted to try out like posting my art on different places. So that's why I decided to post there. Yeah, it's a um, it's definitely overwhelming. And then if you just go with the flow, I think it just, it doesn't matter. Like you just explore and you figure out what is what things are kind of hidden, but once you figure out where they are, you know, it's fun. It's just, um, it's very unconventional. Um, 
But when I saw this piece that you posted, definitely curious how you made it. I'll describe it for the audio listeners. It's like a frame for a mirror with a hand coming up and holding a flower. And I don't know if it's blood or something else, but there's something dripping on the hand. And it's one of those things where I don't know you that well, but I know you a little bit through lens. And when I saw this piece, it was like, that's exactly you. Like I knew immediately, even without your name attached to it, I would know that you made this piece. So I'm curious about like, what is the inspiration for it? How did you make it? Is there any meaning or symbolism behind this? Yeah, so this is actually inspired by one of my favorite books. It's called The Picture of Dorian Gray. And I think I will have to go through the book a little bit without spoiling too much in case you actually want to read it, because I think it's quite relevant to why the piece looks like this. So it's about this really beautiful young guy that started as a really pure young man, and he had a portrait painted for him by his painter friend. And later on, he grew really obsessed with beauty and youth. And that's how he started to corrupt on the inside. And the story goes like this. Basically, he doesn't age at all, but his portrait ages. And so his portrait reflects this internal corruption that's growing inside him. So that was my inspiration for this piece. And yeah, I picked this color scheme because I want to portray this dichotomy between beauty and corruption. So you have this very dark, but also very vibrant colors going on. Um, That's quite interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And speaking of uh, creation, do you have any rituals to get creative or how does it go? Because when I'm writing, trying to write some articles, sometimes I'm like, oh shit, I'm not fucking inspired. And sometimes I just go for a walk or to the gym. What, how do you manage that to get creative? I think I always start with gathering ideas. A lot of times I like to start by writing, contrary to everything else that I do. I think writing really helps because it helps you organize all the random ideas in your head. So I like to flesh out all the ideas on paper. And then I start looking for inspirations online, different images, movies. Sometimes music helps a lot too. I often find myself um, getting distracted by the music that I'm listening to at the time when I'm creating a piece. And that sort of end up like guiding my piece in a different direction. So what, yeah. What kind of music does it inspire is the most? Oh boy. Yeah. I, <laughs> my music taste is all over the place. I don't know. Sometimes I listen to a lot of rock music, but I also listen to a lot of like classical music. So it really depends on my mood. Yeah. Yeah. Same here. Also, I feel like music is quite a relaxing uh, way to become more productive and more creative. Fully agree with you. So I know you as a photographer, but you stated in this that you've edited, like this is like a composite. So what was mm -hmm. the process here? Is this the first time that you've branched off from that? And like, what made you decide to go this route? And how did you make it? I've actually done a few pieces like this before. I posted a few times so I think it was hard to tell because I didn't specify how I made it so basically composite is when you combine multiple images together and you edit them in a way obviously with a lot of photoshopping to make them look like they belong to the same image so you through that you can create like a very surreal looking scene but at the same time they almost look real because of how you edit them so in this case there were two photos. One photo was the mirror itself. So obviously, the original photo, you will see me in a photo because I'm taking the picture of this mirror, right? Or at least the tripod, whichever photo it is. And then the second image will be like my hand. So that was my hand holding this flower. And so I combined these two photos together to create this. So it almost looks like it's like part of the mirror image. Yeah, I mean, it, it looks stunning. I would not know that it's a composite. I guess if you've done it before, you're doing it in such a way that it looks real and it, it's it's very well done. <laughs> so thank um, you. Yeah, it's it's very it's, it's very inspiring. That it's just very it's very clean. Like I said, even if you didn't post it, I would know that you made this 
This has you written all over it. And so, yeah, it was very cool to see. So uh, same question that we asked James. Do you remember the first dollar you made online? I think it would be on Lens because I've, never, I've posted my works on other platforms before, but obviously I've never made money on them because I didn't have a really big following. I still don't actually. Yeah, that just wasn't a thing. And I wasn't, I wasn't expecting anything anyways. But then I forgot which piece it was, but I'm pretty sure it's on Lens. My first dollar, first collect. Yeah, that would be my first dollar made online. That's where we need to stick with. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, thank you, Amber. Thank you very much for being here, Amber. We truly really appreciate it. And um, we hope to have you back sometime soon. And uh, good yeah, luck with this drop. And, and anybody that wants to check it out, I have it pinned in the space. There might be one or two copies left, but very limited. And I would certainly check out Chromadin and... Of course, check out Amber's artwork. It is incredible, along with the photography as well. Just truly incredible and inspiring to see such talent on lens. And it's one of those things where there are times where I'm like, oh, I don't even need to mirror this. I don't need to repost this because everybody on lens is looking at this right now. So uh, truly, we're very thankful for you being here, spending some time with us. Once again, thank you so much. And yeah, anyone on here is not following yet, Amber, just give it a follow and check her amazing art. So speaking of art, we're going to move to the last topic of this show, and we're going to dive in into the trusted talent of the week. There may have been some misunderstandings here, or probably didn't explain it well. Our idea is to have a post going live after this show until the next week before the next show will go live where people will share in the comments available posts to collect with the link. And this week, most of the posts are already not eligible to collection. So we went through the likes. So the most liked comment was, for instance, Wikidata, that amazing art he made with the data and with the that drawing with the, with the figures. However, this post is not able to collect anymore because we want to add all these collectible posts to our gallery. This trusted talent is only for valid collectible posts when the show will go live or until the day before, let's say. So based on that, we went through all their data, through all the likes for, like I said, Wikidata had 28 likes, but it's not available to collect anymore. The post for Mary got 44 likes, Eremeter got 20 likes, Chaotic Monk, one of his posts shared by Punkas got 30 likes. However, they are not eligible for collections. Then the next one that was available for collection was the one from Eamon Man. Sorry if, if, if we didn't explain it well, but this is how we want to work because then we want just to buy this piece of art and add it to our gallery that will live in our TPA lens wallet. So the winner for this week is Even Man. Yeah, the, the idea is that we all collectively as a community here are going to build this art collection and we will build other things as well, but we're starting with the art collection and we want people to post a collectible link, like something to something that we can purchase and put it into this giant collection so that we can all own it together and then we can all vote on it. We can use the data. And so then the idea is like months from now, when we have week after week of purchase after purchase, now we have this big collection of art. Then we can all look at this and we can build off of it. We can donate it. We can monetize it. We can build apps off of this. We can show people even on the outside, like this is a community that supports each other. And here are the metrics for that. Here's how many artists we supported. Here's how much we supported them. Here's what we did with the data. And by the way, we invite everybody else to come in and use this. So basically it's building reputation for everybody. And so we'll have, you know, some galleries and we'll display all the names, all the people that donated money this past week. That's incredible. I will certainly put it in the show notes and they will be displayed on the gallery and everybody that um, contributed like we will all get recognition for this. This is not about, trust me, bro. Our goal is to build something together and then move that out into the real world 
to someone who can actually use the data. And we all, as a community, have this reputation and this chance to build something together and decide how we want to use it and build off of it. So yeah, congratulations to Evan Mann, the very first entry into our collection here. And hopefully we can continue this. So uh, thank you, everybody. We will create a new post. And again, we will ask for people to post links to collectible content. So if you see someone's great work, whatever you think would make a great contribution to this art collection, yeah, just add a link and then vote by liking the comments. I'll just like to leave some hints for the creators. When you're not going to create some collectible posts, don't set up a limit time for collection or at least set it up for seven days from today. So then we can add your collectible to our gallery. And another thing that we would like to be quite transparent with this trusted talent is, as you may notice, this post is collectible for a fee, the main post. And this, well, what we are collecting, it's used to fund, to buy the post from the winner. With the time being, and hopefully we'll get more people collecting the main post of announcing the trusted talent, we can then also uh, distribute this revenue. And I think that's it for now. We are already 30 minutes over time, we still need to fine tune how many article, articles we need to go through. Bear with us, this is our second show. I think we are improving and thank you everyone for being here. We definitely want to thank everybody for being here. Also, just so everybody knows, the space goes till the top of the hour. The way Butterfly Spaces works is they go in two hour blocks. So we would definitely like to start this after party situation where after the show, we just open it up to everybody whoever wants to come up on stage and talk and hang and mingle. So uh, even though the show is over, the space will continue until the top of the hour or until uh, everybody leaves. Thank you all for being here and see you next week.